So the series I'm going to be talking about here is a series that I plan on doing uh, manga reviews for at some point. It's uh, in the foreseeable future. But I'm not talking about the manga for the series. Instead, I'm going to be talking about the anime for the series, which hasn't even concluded yet. And, from my understanding, still has a couple more story arcs before the story even comes to its uh, complete conclusion. And that is Dragon Quest Dai no Dai Boken, or Dragon Quest The Adventures of Dai. Now, Dragon Quest The Adventures of Dai did get an anime way back in the 90s, like 92, but it stopped at a very crucial point. And by crucial, I mean, like, it was, a, it was a point, essentially, from my understanding, where the series went from being good to great. But the new anime went past that point, obviously. And I don't see a lot of people really talking about the series. This, which is criminal, which is just fucking criminal to me. Because the series is an absolute fucking banger. Yeah, you know, it's very cliched, and there's a lot of stuff that you've probably seen time and time again, but you gotta keep in mind that this series originally came out during the same era as, say, uh, Hoto no Ken, Dragon Ball, Sakigake Otokojuku, uh, Saint Seiya, you know, around that time. So, yeah, compared to now, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of cliches. And yes, the series does borrow a lot of elements from other series, but it also introduced a lot of elements too that we see being used by newer mangakas or just anime in general. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about how great this fucking series is and the fact that the main cast is just incredible. Yeah, it does suffer from the uh, rely on the main character trope that a lot of shonen manga do, which I kind of eh, don't really like that, because then, you know, it's like the main character gets all the shine, all the other characters don't get their, don't get that much time in the spotlight, but then if someone argues with me, you know, like, wait, but that's why they're the main character. They should get the majority of the spotlight. And I argue with, hmm, should they... You know, Luffy's the main character of One Piece, but he doesn't, he doesn't hog all the fucking spotlight. And I feel the same thing goes with here. Dai might be the main character, but the author knows when to give characters their own spotlights. And the other thing, too, is that we have the whole uh, adversaries and villains becoming allies trope within the story as well. Which means that Dai ends up getting some powerful fucking allies as this story progresses. And even some people that you would, wouldn't even think that would become an ally, and they become allies. Sometimes they're allies only for the benefit of actually fighting Dai later on in the plot. Which is kind of weird. Now, if you don't know the story of Dai and the Vulcan, Here's the here's a quick rundown, as quick as I can possibly make it for you. And before I do that, I know it's about four minutes in right now. And could you do me a favor? Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification icon, make sure that bell is ring a ding dingin, as well as give video a thumbs up. That way, the YouTube algorithm knows that my content's worth watching. All right, so here's a quick rundown. Yada yada yada. Years ago, okay, I don't remember how long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was this being called the Dark Lord Hadlar. Hadlar had an army called the Dark Army, and he basically made the human world a living hell. But there was a hero named Avon who came forward, triumphed with his friends, and defeated the Dark Lord. But wait a minute, years later, Dark Lord Hadlar returns. Yeah, he, he returns, but turns out he's actually not the big, big bad. There is a hierarchy here where there's someone above Hadlar's head named Dark King Varn. Varn wants to 
take the human world and put it under his, under his subjugation. Enter Dai, a young boy who's been raised by monsters on a island called Drumline. And thus our story begins. That's a quick rundown. <laughs> okay, from this point onwards, I'm getting to spoiler territory. So, if you have not watched Dragon Quest Adventure of Dai, or if you're in the middle of it and you think, oh, I know what's gonna fucking happen, uh, maybe you shouldn't watch the rest of this video, because I'm gonna spoil the shit out of you. All right. They all gone? Are the people that didn't watch the rest of, well, at least up to uh, episode 59, are they gone? Okay, here you go. Spoiler territory happens now. All right. So let's talk about Dai's group of friends. Now, after the death of... Uh, Master Avon, Dai is then, yeah, he gets a kind of partner, but at first his partner doesn't necessarily hmm, do a whole lot, but his growth in the story is tremendous, and I'm talking about the one and only Pop. That's the character's name, yes, Pop. And Pop pops off quite a few times. And talk about just character growth in the, in the, the just fear of fact of, as I say, fear fact, the fuck? The sheer fact that Pop at first is a coward, he wants to run away, he doesn't want to face, you know, the troubles that are in front of him, but as the series progresses, Pop realizes, and not just him realizing it himself, but also uh, seeing through, like, what happens through the story, Pop generally comes to the realization that he has to play his part as one of the disciples of Avon, or Avon, whatever, um, along with this young, this girl named Mom, and a former Dark Army general by the name of Hyunkle, who at first thought that Avon killed his father, but then, then came, came to realize, not realize, um, <laughs> had the revelation that it was actually, actually Hadlar who had killed his father, and not uh, Avon. By the way, by I mean father, this uh, was actually his uncle's um, subjugate, subjugative father, or I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that damn word wrong, but whatever. But yeah. Pop's character is just phenomenal. And he's definitely Dai's best friend in the story. He's essentially the Krillin in, in this story. Like the Krillin Usopp, I'd say, for the story. Hyunkle is... Uh, hmm. He's, he at first seems like the Vegeta of the story. But then later on, I'd say he becomes more of like the Roanoa Zoro. If that makes any sense. Very stoic, but he's definitely there for his friends when they fucking need him. And honestly, Hyunkle becomes cooler after he becomes after he uh, goes from being a villain to being a good guy. Another one that's a villain that turns into a good guy too is Crocodyne, and Crocodyne is actually the first to turn to basically flip the script of the story. Going from being uh, one of the six generals of the dark of the uh, dark army, being the general of the beast, being the beast king general basically, to then uh, becoming one of Dai's most powerful allies. And the greatest thing about Crocodile is the fact that this dude can take damage, like he is a straight up fucking tank. There's so many times he should have died in the story, and he just didn't die. Like, 
God, I, I, I certain, I find other characters were, were almost indestructible. I don't know what the fuck it takes for Crocodine to actually get killed. There's a part of the story where, Croc where Crocodine, um, gets a fist right through his stomach. And I'm not talking, I'm talking like, you can see the fist coming out of the, out of his fucking back, okay? <laughs> and it's covered in blood. Yeah, that would have killed anybody else. But for Crocodine, no. Then there are times where he gets his back bro broken, he gets every single bone in his body broken by certain spells, and he just keeps getting up. And it just keeps on fucking going. So it goes to show you that Crocodine is just someone you just don't fuck with. Because, like, if, okay, if you break someone's back and they're still getting up, like, you didn't do shit? Fuck? Really? <laughs> then, probably one of the, one, another one of the best glow-ups in this fucking story is Mom. Yeah, that's her actual name, is M-A-A-M, -A -A Mom. And she's, I, eh, she's a love interest of Pop. But she's more than that, though. Because she learns martial arts and learns something called the Refractor Fist, which it, basically, it's like, imagine healing properties, but there's so much healing property that the healing does the reverse effect. Meaning that, you know, give somebody too much healing, it actually will start hurting them. It's kind of like if you give, you know, plants too much water, the plants then start to die. Or if the plants left out in the sun for too long, the sun can actually start burning the plants. Don't believe me? It's it's true. Fucking look it up. And it's so it's like that basically. Then you got uh, this little rat dude named Chu, who. Later on, at first, uh, not that like he's useless, but you can tell he's just a comic relief kind of character. But then later on, this dude starts creating his own little fucking army by challenging and defeating other monsters. And then there you have it where he creates what he himself calls the Beast King Commandos. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> And there's just so much more I want to talk about this series, like the like the fact that there's some characters that you would never in your wildest dreams have imagined to even help dying his friends out, but they do, and it's just fucking crazy. So basically, what I'm trying to say say here is that if you want a story with some good character, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I'm tripping over my own tongue here. Um, if you want a story with some very well-placed character development, some bomb-ass fucking fights, and something that's just going to basically be entertaining. Now, keep in mind, none of the, really none of this story is too deep. So, if, if you're looking for something that's more uh, psychologically complex... This is not for you. It's, this is essentially a like popcorn movie kind of kind of anime, you know. It's a shut your brain off kind of deal, but it's not completely stupid. Shut your brain off, like other like some other series that I'm not going to mention. So, anyways, if you have seen uh, Dragon Quest Dino Dai Boken, I mean, I if you're if you have seen, if you've seen it, and here's a couple questions, okay? If you're one of the people that decided to keep on watching this video, even though I fucking warned you about spoilers, okay? <laughs> um, and if you stopped watching the show, watching Dino Diebolkin, tell me, why did you stop watching it? What was the reason that, you know, you went, nah, this is ain't for me? And for those who are still watching the story... What's the reason why you keep on watching that story? I'll tell you why I keep watching it. It's primarily because I just, I want to see just, it's okay. I want to see how things end, of course, duh. 
but I also want to see just how much better everybody gets, you know, because there's always to be room for improvement here. And another question I want to ask you guys is this, okay, very important, on Team Die, who is your favorite character? And although he doesn't really get to do a whole lot, in my opinion, my favorite character is Crocodyne. Because, you know, somebody got to give the alligator some love, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Alright, so what do you guys think? of Dragon Quest, Dino Die Vulcan, the anime that came out in 2020 and still going strong. My guess is, is that the anime will probably come to its conclusion next year. And I'm just going to, I don't know, go off a whim here and say that it's probably going to be con probably get its conclusion, uh, I'd say probably spring or maybe in the summer of, of next year. Don't quote me on that. I'm probably wrong. All right. <laughs> All right. So make sure to leave a comment. I think I said already, but I don't quite remember if I did or not. My bad if I did. Uh, gives you a thumbs up. That way the YouTube algorithm will know that my content is worth watching. As well as share this video with your friends, family, and whom have you. You know, whether, whether it is to just make fun of my flaws in the video or... To be like, hey, this guy knows his stuff. Check him out. <laughs> as well as, hit the notification icon. Make sure bell is a ring a ding dingin. Yeah, I know my camera keeps shaking a lot. That's because I am keep hitting this table and this makes it shake a lot. So, ooh, sorry about that. <laughs> Alright, I'll chat with you guys later.